AI art seems problematic. Giant companies sweep the internet for billions of images, feed them to the all-consuming algorithm that then learns to produce art on its own. Depending on who you ask, this is either one of humanity's greatest creations or nothing more than brazen theft. The AI can even reproduce artists' individual styles, living or deceased, sometimes leaving the amalgamations of signatures from the artists it's been trained on. And while the technology isn't quite at the level of fully replacing artists, it's advancing fast, which makes this a pretty serious concern. After all, what could you make as an individual that a machine trained on the works of every human artist in history can't do on its own? Especially when it can whip out an image in a couple of minutes that would take you hours, days, if not weeks. Just another case of big business screwing over creative workers, am I right? Uh, am I right? Well, let's start with the question of copyright. There are two scenarios where AI could violate the copyright of human artists, in the input of the data and the output of the art. When it comes to the input, a big part of the data the algorithm trains on is through libraries of images in the public domain, meaning pictures that belong to all of us. Yay! But the Creative Commons are only so large. The vast majority of images are privately owned, so many organizations turn to scraping the internet for any image they can find. This is where things get tricky, and while the whole thing is a bit of a legal gray area, there's some legal precedent in the US to believe that scraping copyrighted images to train AI is totally fair use. Namely, Authors Guild versus Google that saw the two scrapping it out over Google Book Search. Google had been scanning and digitizing vast swaths of literature in an effort to make every book in the world partly available online, which obviously ticked off publishers. Google would allow users to search through the text of the book and provide brief snippets of them online, which was a game changer for the discovery of content. But they hadn't sought permission from the copyright holders. After a lengthy legal battle, the court found Google's scanning of the books was fair use, citing the transformational nature of Google Book Search, as well as the fact that Google Book Search didn't hurt online book sales or threaten the bottom line of the Authors Guild in any way. The case doesn't have anything to do with machine learning, but we can definitely draw parallels to big tech taking things that don't belong to them, scanning them, and then creating an entirely new tech product. The question then is, does AI make transformative use of the original works? And yeah, absolutely. Copyrighted works are scanned to teach the algorithm, and after that, they aren't used again. While Google literally showed snippets of copyrighted works in the final product, AI is a lot less infringy in that regard, which is huge when trying to demonstrate the transformative nature of your use of copyrighted work. Now, where AI might get into trouble is whether it competes with the copyrighted art it's been trained on. If AI uses an artist's work to learn how to make competing products, that might be a hard fair use claim to make in a courtroom. The defense could argue that their product is the AI algorithm itself and not the art it produces, but this is where it'll take someone with very deep pockets to sue and figure this one out. And literally right before I started recording, the first lawsuit just got filed and we'll see what happens with that. But there's reason to suspect that AI might have the legal upper hand here. For example, even if AI can learn to produce art in the style of living artists, a style isn't copyrightable, only individual works are. So even if the machine pumps out hundreds of works in your style, which in the art world is a total dick move, you wouldn't have grounds to sue unless it violates the copyright of a specific image. At least, that's the way I understand it. And these programs have a number of safeguards in place to prevent it from creating exact replicas. Tell an AI to draw the Mona Lisa and it's never gonna make a one-to-one -one recreation. As one outlet put it, it's almost as if the AI is drawing it from memory, which in some way, it is. It's reconstructing what it thinks it looks like, and it does a relatively good job of it because it's seen it a lot of times. So with enough safeguards and detection systems to weed out blatantly infringing material, the output should be relatively fair use as well. So in summary, AI seems to be more fair use than not. So I think the real question we should ask isn't whether this is legal, but whether this is ethical. One recent news story that reminded me of the ethics of AI art was how Google and Facebook recently got into hot water in Australia over scraping info from news sites and sharing snippets of their coverage in search results. 
This meant fewer users would navigate to the new sites since they could get the TLDR through a third party, meaning no revenue for the actual producers of the content that was being used. Australia's solution? Have the tech giants share the revenue with news agencies. After all, if your data scraping and tech ends up driving the creators you're profiting from out of business, well, you won't have anything to scrape if there's no more content, right? When it comes to AI art, you'd think we could come up with a similar solution to a similar problem. If these algorithms are using your art, you should see a piece of the pie. After all, you own the art. And it's a stance I've seen plenty of artists take. But this isn't that good of a comparison. Google and Facebook were directly taking content from third parties and showing it in a way that hurt those businesses. But AI is less directly taking art, but just kind of looking at it to learn how to make art on its own. You see, most datasets AI uses consist of links to images, like a virtual gallery. And like a human artist learning and being inspired by the works it sees online, AI is doing the same. It's just being inspired by the works of others. And differentiating between ethical and unethical inspiration is tricky. Think of the legion of animated knockoffs like What's Up or Ratatoying, two movies where the creators stretched the definition of inspiration into pretty unethical territory. There's no artistic integrity in these movies, they're just rushed cash grabs. And they're joined by the likes of forgeries and traced art as creative works that we can all agree are unethical. But what about something like joke theft, where a comedian isn't exactly stealing a joke, but instead they hear a joke, forget they heard it, then years later when brainstorming material, the old joke materializes from that primordial soup of creativity we have in our brain and it makes it out on stage. When it comes to something so unintentional, I think we have to carve out a middle gray zone between ethical and unethical inspiration where inspiration just is. Which is kind of the thing about inspiration, you can't control it. From the moment you're born, you're taking in all this sensory input that's forever getting mixed into that creativity soup you use when you're making art. If I see a piece of art posted on social media, I can't take that back, I can't unperceive it, and it very much might influence my future work. But you might say there's a big difference between humans being inspired by the world around them and an AI intentionally seeking and analyzing art, right? One is a man-made machine whose whole purpose is to essentially remix art, and the other is a human. We could draw a line in the sand and say, when a human does this, it's fine, when a machine does it, it's a problem, and end the discussion here. But that's not a very satisfying answer, is it? Machines and humans are not the same. But if we can't come up with a more logical answer, I don't think this solves the question either because in practice, I don't think the two are different at all. If a human can see a publicly posted picture and learn from it, I don't see why an algorithm can't do the same thing. And if you want to get philosophical with it, technology isn't inhuman either, we're the ones who make it. And I prefer to see technology as extensions of our humanity, both the good and the bad of it, and not perversions of humanity like some online commentators seem to do. So, do artists get anything, or are they just shit out of luck? Should they just accept the changing times and their decreasing value to society? I mean, creatives still exist under contemporary capitalism, and if the AI machine is allowed to continue flourishing, millions of creatives face genuine displacement. Much like artisans were displaced by the Industrial Revolution, today, artists, coders, writers, and even video editors face an uncertain future once the technology gets good enough. Automation is coming for all creatives, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. So allow me to wave the red flag and say that the solution must be a systemic one, as creative workers deserve strong job and welfare programs to keep them from becoming homeless. And don't take my word for it, take Article Forge CEO Alex Cardinal's word, who argues that anyone in the AI space should be backing a robust safety net, including universal basic income and free access to education, which he says is the bare minimum a society in the midst of such a revolution should offer. But look, we know the world that we live in, how society relishes in the disposability of workers. Let's be honest with ourselves. Creative workers are going to lose their jobs long before the safety nets get put out, and that safety net will inevitably have lots of holes that many will slip right through. 
Automation is likely to generate poverty before it helps it. So what should the stance be on revolutionary technology like this? If we know help isn't going to come, should we even support it? I honestly have no clue. Let me know what you think down below. But I do have some reasonable recommendations for our AI overlords to lessen the pain of the transition. Artists should, at a minimum, be able to opt out their artwork from these algorithms. Why? Well, Google Maps allows you to blur your house from being viewable in Street View. As far as I know, this giant tech company isn't under any obligation to blur the houses people live in. When, like art on social media, they're freely viewable in the real world to take pictures of and post online. But some people want their shit blurred out of the online directory, just like some artists don't want their art in the algorithm. So I think this is a no-brainer move. I also think that in an effort to provide transparency in the process and possibly direct people to the human artists that these machines are built off of, each AI image could provide the sources it most heavily drew from. Technically, I'm not sure how possible this is, but having the whole process be more transparent and providing visible credit to the artists the AI is built off of would be, I think, good. But beyond these piecemeal reforms, the AI revolution is coming, and short of transforming society for the better, none of us are safe. Hooray! But there's something else about the AI art conversation that's troubling me. There's this strange affirmation of the copyright system by anti-AI people even the more progressive ones who understand our copyright system is fundamentally broken become weird copyright zealots who argue that artists own their art and should be able to control how it's used. And this is going to piss a lot of people off, but fuck it, I'ma say it. Part 2. Why artists shouldn't own their art? No, for real though, hear me out though, hear me out. Today, artists own their work insofar as they're the only ones allowed to make copies of it, hence copyright. And the logic behind copyright is pretty sound. The cost of creating original works is high, but the cost of copying these works is pretty low. So in order to maintain an economic incentive for creators to create, their work is privatized much like real physical property. The idea being that if we didn't grant them these ownership rights, well, no one would create anything culturally valuable because there'd be no money in it. And if you did, someone with more money and resources than you would just steal your work and expand on it, leaving you with nothing. Just like Europeans enclosed the common lands with fences designating certain land private, so too did copyright take the logic of property rights and apply it to creative ideas and works of fiction. Now, even concepts themselves have imaginary fences preventing anyone from trespassing. But determining who owns a piece of land is easy. You can trace back the lineage of deeds. Determining who owns the copyright to a work of fiction? That's a lot harder. So we default to a concept of authorship. Whenever you create an original work, not a copy, you own the copyright to that creation, since you are the undisputed creator. But how do you piece apart what parts of a work are original and what parts are copies? Well, we have to go back to the doctrine of the commons. Trust me, this all ties back to AI art, I promise. Much like the real commons, the public domain encompasses everything that's uncopyrightable. And while we usually think of stuff like Shakespeare, the public domain encompasses a lot more than just old shit no one cares about. Case in point, meet Mr. Fingleflaggle, my 100% original character I just made up. He jumps real high and he goes, Yahoo! when he does it. Mr. Fingleflaggle is my copyrightable creation, despite being a Super Mario knockoff. But even though I own this copyright for this OC, powers like jumping high and traits like being a happy-go-lucky character aren't copyrightable. So I'm safe from any Nintendo lawsuits that allege infringement based on these characteristics that have been deemed uncopyrightable. And whenever courts deny protection to any aspect of a copyrighted work, all those denied aspects join the public domain. Still following along? Okay, because boy, it has been a doozy figuring out what's copyrightable and what's not. Take movies as another example. Since motion pictures were a thing, courts became flooded with copyright lawsuits alleging infringement. Even in cases where the defendant had clearly been <clears throat> inspired by the prosecution's work, where there were clear parallels in setting, action, and character, 
And even where there was literal concrete evidence that the defendant had just based their story on the prosecution's work, the courts decided to just say, eh, fuck it. Plots, themes, titles, characters, ideas, and situations, that's all part of the public domain now, so stop suing each other. Holy shit. And it was as good of a line in the sand as any, right? Because once you accept one of these cases as copyright infringement based on a few broad similarities or story beats, then the entire industry becomes vulnerable to accusations of infringement. Because newsflash, there's no such thing as original work. Look at Mr. Feningle Flaggle. Tell me this is an original character. Yes, they technically are, but there's nothing original about them. It's an amalgamation of other works I've seen put together in a particular way. Yes, I am the one who put them together, and yes, I am the creator, but does that mean that I now deserve ownership rights over this idea like if it was some parcel of land? Authorship and ownership are two very different concepts, are they not? As scholar Jessica Littman puts it, according to this romantic model of authorship, Creative processes are magical and are therefore likely to produce unique expression. The expression is unique because the real author is using words, musical notes, shapes, or colors to clothe impulses that come from within her singular inner being. This mysterious inner being may be the repository of impressions, experiences, and the work of other authors, but the author's individual sensibility recasts that raw material into something distinct and unrecognizable. We know that real authors create rather than copy, so we are comfortable with a presumption that the work they register for a copyright is original. We believe in the idea that expression is created from thin air and the correlative notion that the universe of creative expression is infinite. So we are ready to conclude that similarity of expression must reflect plagiarism, and we worry not a bit that our conclusions are unverifiable because they reflect our intuitive beliefs about reality. Artists have been deluding themselves for centuries with the notion that they create. In fact, they do nothing of the sort. So Littman clearly didn't care about hurting anyone's feelings, but is she wrong though? The universe of creative expression is not infinite, and as the saying goes, all art is derivative of something else. What we call copyright laws are just arbitrary lines in the sand that are more based on the practical goal of protecting the economic rights of creators than any sound logic. Because the idea that each piece of art has a single author is a myth. We do not lock ourselves into an attic and produce masterpieces out of thin air we build on the works of others. Far from being the unique expression of an individual, all art is dialogic, created from and in response to the work of others. Which, yeah, we can all recognize that. But it's that economic incentive that copyright is meant to protect, nothing else. Because without the carrot on the stick of profit, at the end of the day, no one would make art. Well, guess what? Copyright does a pretty shit job of doing that too. Take Japan as an example, where copyright laws surrounding fan works of copyrighted media are much less strict. The legal fanfiction, or doshinji market, I probably pronounced that horribly, I'm sorry, it's hugely popular, with some creators even being able to make a healthy living from selling their fanfiction, which over here would get you sued to oblivion, like it's not even funny. So how could creative works flourish in Japan without that powerful guiding hand of European style copyright? Well, it's simple. Copyright is a creativity limiter. It monopolizes the control of certain ideas and concepts, placing control of them squarely on the copyright holders, the Disney's and Nintendo's of the world. And for them, the copyright system works amazingly. For everyone else, for a children's daycare drawing their characters on the wall to please the kids, for competitors trying to run a tournament of a copyrighted game, or for creators trying to include a joke scene of Batman eating out Catwoman in their show, in each of these cases, the powerful media conglomerates trampled over their creativity. Disney told the daycare to erase their murals, Nintendo told Smash players to get lost, and DC told the Harley Quinn writers they couldn't show that on TV. And yeah, it's kind of funny how none of this shit matters, but for creatives, this is serious business. And loosening or outright doing away with copyright is likely to lead to an explosion and intensification of the production of creative works. 
It might not be as directly lucrative for institutions like Disney, but there are still ways to carve out a living as an artist in a world with reduced copyright. After all, artists survived for hundreds of years before copyright through a system of patronage, and it seems that's the direction we're moving towards again anyway. So what does this have to do with AI? In a world where AI art becomes widespread, copyright essentially becomes meaningless, since whatever you make will be replicated by a machine. Of course, that's pending the decision of the courts to codify the rights of AI and machines to create, but if that happens, and it's likely to happen, your individual copyright loses most of its value as AI floods the art market with quick and easy to make, but legally distinct, replicas of anything imaginable. But this isn't necessarily the end of the world for creators. It could be an opportunity. In a world where copyright will soon have less sway and artists have less control over their art thanks to the powers of AI, it's worth asking, can creatives survive in a world without copyright again? I definitely think so. And I think we might have to very soon. So my fellow creatives, I implore you, stop worrying so much, just make cool shit that people like, and that's all we can hope to do anyway. But what do you think? I'm not married to these ideas. Artists, please do not hurt me. Let me know. I'm going out on a limb here with this idea, this concept. Who knows? We'll see where the courts go. We'll see what happens. But uh, yes, don't, don't, don't send me death threats. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day.